Today we're going to start chapter 8, which is about rational expressions. The first section, variation functions, talks about four different types of variations, direct, inverse, joint, and combined. And we're going to talk about what those equations look like and how we go through and write out those equations. The first type of variation is direct variation. A direct variation equation looks like this, y equals k times x, uh, where k cannot be equal to zero. What we call k is the constant of variation, and we're going to see this variable k in all four types of variations that we see, and in each one of those we do call it the, the constant of variation. For the equation y equals kx for a direct variation, the way that that's actually stated is y varies directly as x. So when you see this statement here, y varies directly as x, that means that we're going to use this equation y equals kx. An easy way to think about this is every time that you see that that phrase directly, what that means is that we are going to be multiplying the variable, whatever variable it says after it varies directly, uh, we're going to multiply that variable with the k with the constant of variation. So this first problem that we're going to take a look at is given y varies directly as x. So step number one is we want to actually go through and take the information that they're giving us and be able to find k. They're telling us y equals 14 when x equals 3.5. So since it says varies directly as x, we're going to take the y, that's the first variable that we see, uh, varies directly. So when we take that constant of variation, directly means that we're going to multiply with the x, so y equals kx. Step number one we need to do is we need to actually find the k value. We need to find that constant of variation. It tells us y equals 14 when x equals 3.5. So all we have to do is take that and substitute that in. 14 equals k times 3.5. And then just solve this for k, which would be divide both sides by 3.5. And that's going to give us a value of 4 for k. Step number two is once we actually find k, we actually want to write the equation out with the k. And so we just take that 4, we're going to put it back into our equation, so y equals 4x. And now our third step is just going to really be answer whatever the question is asking us. So in this case, the question wants two things. Number one, write the equation, which we did just do that, y equals 4x, and then two is going to be graph it. Well, up here it did say that it's a linear relationship, meaning it's going to be a line. This looks a lot like y equals mx plus b. So we can just go through and say our m is going to be 4 over 1, our slope is 4 over 1, and our y-intercept is 0. Plot our y-intercept and use a slope of 4 over 1. Up 4 to the right 1, up 4 to the right 1, or we could go down and left, down and left. And we get that equation there for our line. A lot of times what we're going to see these problems as though, we're going to see them as word problems where it gives us some information and we just have to do the exact same thing as those three steps. So the circumference of a circle C varies directly as the radius R and C equals 7 pi feet when R equals 3.5 feet. Find R when C equals 3, C equals 4.5 pi feet. So there can be a lot of things within this problem that's going on, but we just want to take it one step at a time. First step is write out that equation based on the variation that they're telling us. So it says C varies directly as the radius R. That means C is going to equal K. There's our constant of variation. Directly is the key word, so we're going to multiply it with R. So C equals KR. And then it tells us C and R at the same time, C equals 7 pi when R equals 3.5 feet. So we can plug those two values in. So 7 pi equals K times 3.5. And it's just a matter now of being able to solve for K. We divide both by 3.5. 7 divided by 3.5 is 2. The pi, we, don't, we can just leave as pi. We don't have to worry about trying to divide it out. And we get K equals 2 pi. So step 2 is plug that K back in there. So it's going to be 2 pi. R, and there's our equation that we get, our direct variation equation for a circumference. That should make sense. Our circumference is equal to 2 pi R. Now we can actually go through and answer the question that it's asking. This is the third part, is find R when C equals 4.5 feet, so or 4.5 pi. So C is 4.5 pi equals 2 pi times R. To get R by itself, divide both sides by 2 pi. The pi's cancel each other out. 4.5 divided by 2 is 2.25. So there's what R is equal to. The second 
type of variation we're going to take a look at is called joint variation. A joint variation is about three variables and it's written in the form of y equals k times x times z. Now it may say it's a joint variation or it may say it just varies directly as two variables there as x and z but k is still a constant of variation. Here we say you know it varies jointly as x and z. That just means multiply by the x, multiply by the z. So it says the area of a triangle varies jointly as the base b and the height h. So let's take step one here of just being able to go through right out that equation. a equals k, it varies jointly, so we're going to multiply by b and by h, so b h. And a equals 12 when b equals 6 and h equals 4. So step one, really find that k value. Let's plug in the a, the b, and the h and see what we get for k. 12 equals k times 6 times 4, 6 times 4 is 24 times k. Divide both sides by that 24 and we get k is equal to 1 half. So step 2 is actually write out that equation then with the k. So a equals 1 half bh and now we can go through and actually answer the question which the question is saying find b. When a equals 36, h equals 8. So 36 equals 1 half we're trying to find the b and h equals 8. Simplify down that left side or that right side. 1 half times 8 is 4. So we get 4b. Divide both sides by 4. And b is equal to 9. We can throw our units since we are dealing with the word problem. We probably should have done that on the last one. Is b is just in meters. So really we're talking about 9 meters. All right, the third kind of variation that we're going to take a look at is inverse variation. Inverse variation is when one of the variables goes up, the other one goes down. The equation looks like this, y equals k divided by x. k also here cannot be equal to zero. And the way that we say that is y varies inversely with x. Well, when we said that it was a direct variation, direct means multiply with the x or multiply with that variable. Inverse is just going to be the opposite, is we just have to divide by our variable, we're going to take that, that k, the inverse, or the constant of variation, we're going to divide it by the variable it says it varies inversely as. So here's our equation or our problem. y varies inversely as x. So inversely means we are going to divide by that variable, so k divided by x. And y equals 3 when x equals 8. So let's go through step 1, find the k. y equals 3 divided by you know, k equals k divided by 8. To solve for k, we just have to get rid of that denominator, multiply both sides by 8, we get k equals 24. So step 2 is write out that equation with the k in there, we get y equals 24 over x. Step 3, answer the question, what it's really saying is, which is right, we already did, graph this inverse variation function. This one in this case is not a line. We haven't seen a, an equation like this, so what we want to do is we're just going to go through and create a table. Well, we pick values for x. Take a look at this. We have to figure out nice values that we could actually divide this by. So maybe we go with 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 doesn't really go into 24, so let's use 6. Uh, we divide it. One, 24 divided by 1. 24 divided by 2. Divided by 3 would give us 8. By 4 would give us 6. This one would, then divided by 6 would give us 4. Well, we can't really plot these two on the graph that we're given, so we can't start with the 3, 8 which would be here, the 4, 6 would be here, 6, 4, and we can actually go through and, and, you know, plot some other ones. If we did plot the 2, 12, it'd be up here, and if we use 12, which would be way over here, we'd get the 2, and those numbers are just kind of reversing because we're talking about not two numbers that would technically multiply to get us at 24. Well, this is what our graph is going to look like. But we haven't really tried any numbers over on this side of the graph. So if we pick some negatives, we can actually just go through and pick a couple nice negatives like negative 3, negative 4, negative 6, which all we're doing is when you multiply or divide by a negative now, that's going to make our answer negative. So we get those numbers. Well, negative 3, negative 8 is here. If we use negative 2, negative 12, it would be down here. Negative 4, negative 6, negative 6, negative 4. We could have used the 8 with negative 3, and we probably could have done negative 12 with negative 2, and we get those points there. This is what the graph of an inverse variation looks like. 
if we go through and, and talk about a couple of different things that we have within here is if we want to be able to name our domain and range, well, we can take a look and say what different values will this graph cover in terms of, you know, the X values for our domain. We could see that it's really going left and right as far as, as far as, you know, infinity and negative infinity, but there is a value that this graph cannot get to. And it's because it starts to go up and up more and more that it's not actually going to reach zero. Now, it may be a little bit of hard to see that from the actual graphs to say that it's never going to have an x value of zero. But if we take a look at the actual equation, think about this. Are there any values that you can't actually put in for the x? As in, are there any numbers that you're not allowed to divide by? And the one number that you can't divide by would be zero. So we can't put in a zero for x because we'd have to be dividing by zero. So that means that our domain just would be x cannot equal zero, which is implying then it can be any other number other than zero. We can do the same thing for our range and say, are there any, you know, y values that the graph cannot reach? Or if you want to think about it a different way is, is there any value that once we put numbers in for x that we won't be able to get for the y right here? As in, if you take 24 and divide it by whatever number, is there any number that you cannot get? And we see that we can get a bunch of positives and we can get a bunch of negative values. But the one value that we're not going to be able to get is going to be zero because 24 divided by anything will never give us zero. So that would mean our range cannot actually equal zero. We can also go through on this graph and we can talk about our asymptotes as in does the graph have any, which it can equal zero for x, it can equal zero for y, which means it's never really going to reach, you know, a value that has x of 0, which would be the y-axis, it's never going to reach the x-axis. So if x cannot equal 0, that means that we have a vertical asymptote where you know x equals x equals 0, vertical line here, and we have a horizontal line on the x-axis, so we have y equals 0. So this graph, the inverse variation function, actually has two asymptotes. It has a vertical one and it has a horizontal one. All right, let's take a look at a word problem. The time T that it takes for a group of volunteers to construct a house varies inversely as the number of volunteers V. So let's actually write that out. Is the time T it takes to construct a house varies inversely means we are going to be dividing by V, so K over V. If 20 volunteers can build a house in 62.5 working hours, let's take step one and actually find the K value. 20 volunteers, so K divided by 20 equals 62.5 hours, 62.5 hours. Multiply both sides by 20 to solve for k. And we get a value of 1250. So step two is actually write out that equation then. t equals 1250 divided by v. How many volunteers would be needed? Step three is actually answer the question. How many volunteers would be needed to build a house in 50 working hours? So the 50 working hours is our T. It says how many volunteers we're looking for the V. So we just fill in the 50 and we get this equation here. It's 1250 divided by V. Well, to be able to solve this, we can't go through and get rid of that 1250. If we wanted to try to multiply by 1250 here, that doesn't cancel out the numerator. The only time that we multiply is to be able to cancel out the denominator. So we can still multiply to cancel out the denominator. We just have to multiply by V. Well, when we multiply by V, it cancels out the denominator, just leaving us with 1250. 50 divided by V, or times V is 50 V. Divide both sides by 50, and that's going to tell us how many volunteers we need, which would be 25. Put our unit after it since we're dealing with the word problem and we have 25 volunteers to be able to build a house in 50 working hours. The other thing that we can do with this is it's not just so much about being able to write out the equations as it is about being able to find at times are we dealing with a direct or inverse variation. Well the direct variation means that we take our constant variation and we multiply it by the x. Well if, if we want to try to figure out which one it is, a direct variation is always going to have this constant of variation. No matter what the values are for x and y, it's always going to have the same k. So we can actually relate our direct variation to the k itself by taking this equation and just dividing both sides by x. And this is what a direct variation would look like to find the value of our constant of variation, the k value, is y divided by x. We can do the same thing for an inverse. Inverse variation starts off like this. If we want to get the k by itself, multiply both sides by the x, 
and we will get k is equal to x times y. What that means is if you have a direct variation, every time that you take the y divided by the x, you're going to get the same number. If you have an inverse variation, if you do y times x, you're always going to get the same number. So if we want to figure out is it a direct or inverse variation, or if it's neither, we just have to go through and say, you know, do we get a constant ratio with the x's or do we get a constant product? Basically what we're doing is we're saying should we plug it into this equation here and solve for k every time that we plug it in? Like if we were to do 9 equals k times 3, what would k give us? Which would be 3. You know, divide both sides by 3, we get k equals 3. We could do that for every single one, but it takes a little bit of time. Whereas if we just divide it both by x, we can find out what the k is immediately to say, you know, is 9 divided by 3 the same as 24 divided by 8 is the same as 30 divided by 10. If it's not the same thing, that's not a, di a direct variation. We would have to try the inverse one. But if we divide these all by, you know, what they are, they all come out to be 3, meaning that we actually have a direct variation that we could go through and write out an equation then because this would be our constant of variation, which is what would we have to multiply the x by to get to y and it'd be 3x. For b, we can do that same thing, is do we have a direct inverse or neither, is go through and take the 8, divide it by 4.5, 3 divided by 12, 18 divided by 2. That definitely does not give us the exact same thing, so it can't be a direct. So we try the inverse, which inverse is the y equals k over x, or multiply both by x, and we get y equals, or k equals x times y. Multiply those, 4.8, or 4.5 times 8, 12 times 3, and 2 times 18. All three of these come out to give us a value of 36, meaning that we do have an inverse variation, and that equation would be y equals 36 over x. The last problem that we're going to take a look at is something called a combined variation, which just has both direct and inverse variation. And if you remember what we said, direct variation means that you're multiplying that variable. Inverse variation means that you are dividing by that variable. So the, this equation, this problem, the, the volume V of a gas varies inversely as the pressure P and directly as the temperature T. The volume V varies inversely. So we're going to take our constant of variation K, varies inversely means that we want to divide by P. So k divided by p. And directly, that means that we want to multiply by that variable, so varies directly as the temperature t means that we're going to go through and put in that t there. Step one, find the k. Step two, plug that in. And step three is actually answer the question. I would like you guys to go through and attempt this one. The couple parts that you should get is when you actually find the k, you should get a value of 0 0.05. And when you go through and you find out what this question is, the actual answer to this question, we should get a pressure of 2.3 repeating atmospheres.